Hello, hello everybody. <laughs> well, I'm just uh, utilizing this new camera and microphone uh, thanks to uh, Kurt from Theories of Everything that uh, just interviewed me. Uh, well, I'm happy I now have this uh, equipment. I think it's going to improve a little bit the consumability of the videos that I make. Um, you know, it's a little bit... <laughs> Uh, kind of like in in those like high definition, you know, TVs where you can see every pore of the skin of the, you know, newscaster. Well, hopefully not 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 to that level, but well, if the quality of sound and the image is a little bit better, hopefully it's going to be more enjoyable, higher valence for you guys. The brief thing I want to talk to you about today is utilizing the 4D wave visualizer uh, that we developed at QRI for you to essentially train your visual system and your somatic system and tune into a four-dimensional phenomenal field, which I think is significant in several ways. So, okay, so first of all, you know, the tool, we have it at qri.org slash demo slash 4D underscore wave underscore control dot HTML, link in the description. Um, First of all, you know, I wish I had this tool when I was, you know, studying linear algebra in college or even in high school, because you can learn quite a bit how a matrix transformation works. Um, you know, how you take any point, let's say in a four-dimensional space, and you, you know, represent it as a vector, four vector, and then you apply a matrix transformation to it and it sends it somewhere else. Okay, so here in this tool, if you take the import in interpolation lever all the way to the left so that we are just focusing on the first matrix transformation. Uh, you know, we're visualizing how that matrix transformation affects every point in a four-dimensional lattice. Well, at first it looks like just 3D, which, you know, you can flip around with the, with the, with the mouse, but it's actually 4D, except that every point actually has a bunch of points overlapping on it because it's sort of like projected in such a way that the fourth dimension, in this case encoded with color, has all of the dots align uh, on top of each other. But you know, if you change um, any of the values of the you know the fourth uh, column or the fourth row, then you're going to be interfacing with the fourth dimension, which again is uh, represented with color. Okay, so what you can do is you know, I highly recommend this <laughs> as an exercise, as a meditation exercise, uh, is you take the XY speed and the ZW speed to around like 0 0.001 or 0 0.003, kind of in that range. Uh, and then you, you know, apply slight changes to all of the values in the matrix. And then you just see the, you know, the, 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 the lattice points kind of just rotate around in this four dimensional space. So what is going to be very tempting is for you to kind of like see two-dimensional or three-dimensional patterns. But, but effectively what's happening is, you know, you're having this four-dimensional lattice and you're rotating it because it's four-dimensional. It, you can rotate it in two ways at once. You know, that is one of the beautiful things of this tool is that you can really start to learn how two simultaneous rotations can happen in a four-dimensional object. If you just click, for example, the... X, Y rotation, well, that's going to be a standard 3D rotation. If you just click the ZW rotation, you're going to have what we call a mixed rotation, where points are going to be kind of like moving back and forth in a line while changing color. But you see, the color is actually movement in another dimension. So, the you know, it's effectively the dots are kind of like doing a circle. But to, to kind of experience or understand the circle, you have to kind of like realize that the color is also an axis of displacement. But then, you know, when you combine both the X, Y and the Z, W rotations, then you have kind of this mixed rotation of color and displacement together with a three-dimensional rotation. Now, what happens is that each of these rotations can essentially store momentum in a way. And that, that is one of the reasons why, for example, on uh, DMT, I am quite convinced it is actually possible to represent and embody higher dimensional objects is because sometimes you can kind of like notice the momentum along rotations in different axes and then kind of like energize, you know, <laughs> an engine or kind of like a, um, yeah, so, so, so some kind of a vortex 
in such a way that you store energy along one axis and then you can slowly but surely kind of like by paying attention to it transform and guide that energy to a different type of rotation and, and stuff like that i mean i do want to still man the idea that it is possible to actually experience higher dimensional objects um the 3d you know one time space <laughs> space time that we are used to is just one special case um Okay, a couple other things I will say is that, okay, you will be tempted to kind of like see this as a three-dimensional object, but keep telling your visual system and your somatic system, hey, this is actually a four-dimensional object. Don't be deceived by the projection. And and the other thing is that you can try to kind of like imagine that the whole volumetric space of your experience is just kind of like one layer painted of a certain color. And then there's kind of like a rainbow it's actually a color wheel, but you can think of it as kind of like a, a rainbow of experiences on top of each other, each of which is three-dimensional. But the color kind of like encodes that extra space where effectively you will have kind of these like stack of three-dimensional experiences, which can behave as a four-dimensional volume. And then as things change color, they're kind of like dialing in into different, you know, levels of this, <laughs> of this stack. I mean, it's, it's almost kind of like having a, a, a book that as you flip the pages, it, it goes from like red to blue as a kind of like rainbow transition. You know, every layer, every page is just one color. Right. And, and so you can dial in into one page by choosing the color. It's going to be something like that, but rather than the book being these two dimensional kind of like planes on top of each other, think of it as this kind of like three dimensional or really 2.5 dimensional, you know, this diorama like shape of different colors stacked together. And then the dots are kind of like moving around it. And rather than trying to focus in any of the projections or the walls of the world simulation, try to really relax and embody the four dimensional rotation. And I promise that really interesting things will start to happen if you achieve a certain threshold of concentration while really determined to experience this four-dimensional space. And one of the things that I found phenomenologically fascinating about this exercise is that you will perhaps, well, again, this is just my observation. I don't know if we'll generalize, but I, I hope so, and I think so. So one of the things that happens is that you realize that already by default, we're actually kind of like a four-dimensional being because we have a little bit of a tracer effect. I mean, this is very, very, very extreme in the case of something like DMT, where you have these like alternating color tracer effects, where it's sort of like you're adding a copy of your experience on top of your experience and then doing it recursively. And so it's kind of like a comet, right? It's like you have an experience and then kind of like lingering copies of the previous states of that experience, but then the experience is actually the whole of it. Right, and then you're copying it, and then you're creating the next slide, and then copying it, and and creating the next next layer, and so on and so forth. Well, uh, so this is already the case, but what happens is that for constructing our sense of reality, we kind of create these loops where we try to stitch together the tracer on top of the current experience, and we do that in an irregular way. And so, you know, maybe your, your, your somatic feel is kind of like more loopy. You're trying to kind of like catch the sensations and, and bring them together and kind of like stitch them together into these like enduring sense of self. Whereas maybe you don't care that much about the visual field, right? Like it's, you don't, don't identify with it, so you let it go. Well, I would argue that this like stitching process actually creates knots and, and strange topologies that then create tension and, and a solidified sense of self. So kind of like being able to, disentangle and experience it as this kind of like comet with several layers of colors allows you to kind of have like this lots of space in a way to, to let your embodiment kind of like relax fully as opposed to trying to loop it around into the present moment, which is kind of illusory because, I mean, the tracer is obviously in the present physical moment, even though phenomenologically it feels in the past. But hey, it's, it's all happening <laughs> together. So it's, it's not like you're going to actually kind of <laughs> let, let it say, hey, you, you belong in the past. It's like, no, obviously, that's just a part of the representational content of your experience. Obviously, it actually just belongs in the present physical moment. It just encoded in such a way that it gives you the feeling that it belongs to the past. But it's the phenomenal past, not the physical past. <laughs> okay, so the more you do it, I would claim the more you try to embody this four-dimensional space, 
the less you habitually will try to kind of like not the sensations in the phenomenal past with the present, phenomenal present, it gives, it's a much more kind of like relaxed and expansive sense of self, which I, I recommend. And, uh, and yeah, in particular, I am very curious if any of you, for example, I'm not recommending you do this. I mean, it's just that, hey, if, you, if you're already planning to, you know, take mushrooms or ketamine or DMT or 5-MeO or one of these exotic um, substances, exotic states of consciousness, again, I don't recommend you do it. And if you do it, you know, do it in, in a place where it's legal, uh, under proper supervision, you know, with good set and setting. But if you do it, I would be very curious as to how you experience this, because there are some reported really profound interactions. I mean, in general, with a lot of the simulations that we have done, you know, the coupling kernels, uh, you know, systems of coupled oscillators, they look really different and very powerful on an altered state of consciousness of the psychedelic type um, or dissociative type, more so the psychedelic, but especially the four-dimensional lattice, uh, because then you can actually use a tracer effect as this kind of fourth dimension. And because you're not trying to stitch together, the, the the phenomenal past to the phenomenal present, you're just letting it be in kind of this tail of a comet. It's actually a higher valence experience. And and you may even notice that a lot of the suffering that we experience, I would claim, is because of like poor projections that we're, at, you're, we're actually kind of this four dimensional structure. But because we're trying to represent a phenomenal present that is 3D, we're constantly kind of like projecting it into 3D and it doesn't quite fit. And worse, it actually self-intersects in weird ways. I mean, that's one of the things that you can see with the tool. Uh, if you can kind of like slide the interpolation slider, uh, and depending on the parameters, sometimes you can see kind of like the hypercube kind of squeeze, squeezify, squeezificate, kind of like it squeezes onto itself, it compresses and it inverts. Well, that in 3D would be very unpleasant because there would be these weird pinch points and, and, and it would be hyper-pressurized. So, so don't do that. I mean, do it, but rather than interpreting it as a three-dimensional effect, instead, tell your whole system, hey, this is a four-dimensional structure. Don't pay attention <laughs> to the projection. Realize that this is a four-dimensional structure. And if you do that, then it doesn't produce a squishification, which is uh, so much better. Um, and my guess is that, yeah, you can keep practicing it um, and uh, and then you may become a four-dimensional being. I mean, of course, you're going to continue to be here and interact with others, but your your rendering of your world simulation may instead be kind of this more relaxed, four-dimensional, layered kind of like book. Uh, my sense is that, yeah, that's maybe connected to enlightenment. Um, yeah, I wonder if other people try it. So anyway, don't hurt yourself. Just do healthy and uh, fun things, but it's just a, a tool worth trying. I'll, I'll I'll share some of the fun parameters uh, in the video description and try it out. All right, infinite bliss, everybody. Take care. Ciao.